Ibix Cash Studio. Good morning and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I am Anuj Singhal in our Mumbai studio and with me of course as always Sonia and Surbi joining in the nice festivities, Diwali festivities of course. Uh, uh, the market of course has been very interestingly poised. Uh, there are three important queues lined up, three big queues and two side queues. Uh, the biggest one is the weekly options expiry. Thanks to Diwali, the weekly options expiry gets pre to today, uh, Wednesday. Uh, and uh, you know of course, uh, uh, tomorrow we have one hour trading session, but uh, expiry happens today. The FOMC meet concludes, uh, uh, we'll of course react a bit tomorrow, but main reaction will happen on Monday. So the market will try to price that in. How much of taper is priced in, we'll find out. And of course, SBI numbers. Uh, in the second half, it will be all about SBI numbers. The stock's almost at all time high. The bank nifty will be in focus because of that. And then I'll throw in a couple of side points, as I said. Uh, Important consumption earnings, Bata and AB Fashions, both FNO stocks uh, and FIs have turned net buyers after 11 days of selling. Perhaps they were also in a bit of a dhanteras shopping. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, Sonia and Surbhi. Hi, good morning, Anur. Morning, Anur. Morning, morning, Sonia. Morning, Surbhi. So it is a kind of Diwali mood, right? We are heading into a four day long weekend. I don't know yes. who is working or who is perhaps interested to work. You're definitely seeing it in the flows. I mean, flows have dried up to a certain extent. I mean, there was what, just about 240 crores of buying by the FIs and DI sold about 6 odd crores. But all the action yesterday, the Diwali was being celebrated in the broader market. So I'll keep that in mind today as well. Uh, you had what, a big surge, almost 260 points higher. And as Anuj said, you know, of course, SBI will definitely be in focus. The momentum is expected to be strong this quarter for SBI. Uh, so that led the bank nifty higher. I'll also watch for telecom because Bharti reported very good numbers post market hours and we'll talk about that in greater detail. It was a beat all around. So perhaps, you know, the entire space could uh, see some bonhomie because of that. And global markets are just doing their bit for us today. And that's the reason why the SGX Nifty as well is indicating a green start. But Anuj, uh, it's, you know, the last day before the long weekend. Of course, people are in festive mood. You expect that good cheer to take the markets higher? Oh, absolutely, uh, uh, Sonia. I think uh, I maintained the view that I had yesterday that the markets made some kind of a near-term bottom. It's uh, it's a shakeout of the markets completed. Uh, and uh, look, today today is the kind of a day where you sort of plan your trade and then trade your plan. Uh, so uh, you know the trade has to be divided into two halves. Uh, I think you have to you'll have to avoid the temptation of trading the first half today because uh, you know a lot of people, uh, especially in the in retail, uh, uh, what they do is they end up uh, you know buying too soon on the expiry day you know, and then options lose their value very quickly uh, also because the first half could see slightly low volume trade mm -hmm. today I think the second half <coughs> will be very important we have three important factors to watch out for in the second half uh, I think SBI numbers uh, expiry and as I said the positioning for the Fed so these are the three factors that uh, you know you will want to keep an eye on now I think today you perhaps do not want to focus as much on the nifty but on the bank nifty and there are two reasons for that uh, bank nifty has been strong continues to outperform and on the bank nifty it's an index which is defending 20 day moving average on every decline so that's a momentum index on the nifty uh, you know if you see the fi data there's a lot of selling yesterday in index futures and there's a lot of call writing and most of the call writing has happened at 18000 18000 call has 1 crore shares open interest uh, outstanding what that means is that 18,000 is a big resistance for the Nifty, but crazy things have happened on expiry. If backed by SBI, you know, if 18,012 is taken out, then a short squeeze is possible on the Nifty. Uh, but that perhaps is likely in the only in the second half if that happens. Uh, uh, but uh, perhaps the better index to focus is on the bank Nifty or the mid caps. I think mid caps will have another field day today. You know, that's something that you can feel uh, when lo looking at the earnings, looking at the way things are, global queues. Uh, uh, and mid caps outperform when you know traders get a sense that okay the market risk is perhaps getting out of the way uh, you know last week there was a lot of market risk because the market was falling one way at least that's out of the way so mid caps can resume their journey that's my sense so be hi hi Anuj. good morning and uh, good morning sonia you know festive greetings to both of you and to all our viewers uh, and yes the market at least has stopped sort of you know sulking like it was last week but you know we still saw the at least the headline indices hesitating all through the day yesterday. Uh, cues for today, the most important one and the most bullish one is the fact that at least Brent has cooled off. So we are looking at numbers closer to 83 now. There's a very important OPEC plus meeting that takes place today. Unlikely that they will offer, you know, higher output to the market or they'll accelerate the pace of the, uh, you know, production increases. Uh, that's the base case the market is going in with. 
Global markets, as Anuj has also been pointing out, there's a fair amount of caution out there. A lot of the Asian screens, by the way, are negative. Uh, there's, mm. there's a tinge of red across Asia. Can't ignore that. The dollar index is at 94. There's not been much movement in the in the uh, bond market. Yields have been very, very ranged ahead of the big, big uh, sort of event, uh, which is the Fed outcome uh, later uh, tonight. Uh, now, in terms of earnings, uh, Anuj, I totally take your point about the cheer in the mid-cap market yesterday. The one number that I kept thinking about in the market reaction was really Dabur. If you look at the intraday graph of Dabur, let's pull up Dabur intraday yesterday. Numbers were well within market hours and they were a massive beat. Uh, despite that, we did not see that kind of a build-up on uh, Dabur. There you go, stock was largely range-bound, kind of peaked when the numbers came in, then cooled off again. Despite the fact that they've done 10% volume growth and you'll, you'll hear more on Dabur as we go along in the show. Today's, of course, major earning is going to be State Bank of India. Let's quickly revise the numbers. It's been all about loan growth. No one's expecting any asset quality hiccups. Can SBI deliver what ICICI Bank did on the loan growth front? Uh, the poll that Abhishek has done, the overall street estimates are between 5 to 6 percent loan growth year on year, flat quarter on quarter. If SBI comes and delivers ahead on this expectation and beats this expectation, chances are the market will take it with both hands. And Anuj, that's the question, you know, while we get more clarity on Fed and the global setup, what's your take on, uh, you know, what we've seen in terms of earnings? Uh, my question on Daba really and why, you know, the stock wasn't cheered up yesterday and whether SBI can lead us, you know, that the second move above 18,000, whether SBI can provide that impetus. You know, uh, Surabhi, uh, I don't know how the SBI numbers would be. What I can tell you is that uh, the screen is telling you, it's, it's screaming from the rooftop that SBI is headed to 600 or even higher. It's, I mean, uh, you know, and <clears throat> I think uh, it's, it's very clear. And uh, uh, look, SBI is clearly a stock which has now started to get some kind of a quasi -piece private bank valuations. Uh, and uh, it's a you know it's it's a stock which over the last 12 months or so has seen a bit of a re-rating and uh, you know if the market is in the same 2003 to 7 kind of phase with capex cycle and uh, you know with the uh, earnings explosion uh, if you go back to that phase uh, there was in the in the best of that phases SBI had outperformed the likes of even hdfc bank and kodak mahindra bank so i i in the market's perhaps playing for an encore on that, uh, as I said, uh, the screen's telling you something that you know this consistency. Unless this is howler, you know we, the issue. We, but you know it's tough to see a howler from SBI. You know if, if you know Canada Bank and you know a couple of others have posted decent numbers. Uh, yeah. ICICI Bank, you know uh, SBI numbers uh, tend to be in line with you know what ICICI Bank does normally, and stock moves also tend to be in line with what ICICI Bank does because you know they're both almost similar companies, mm. uh, and. Uh, uh, so, so that way, I think, uh, as I said, I you know I have no way of knowing what I spend numbers would be, but there's a screen telling me that uh, it's clearly the leader of the banking pack, and perhaps that's not going to change in the near term. Okay, well, uh, let's see. It's expected to be a strong quarter for SBI. We'll keep tracking that one closely. But apart from SBI, a lot of other numbers coming through today as well. There's Aisha Motors, there's Bata, there's Aditya Birla Fashion. So lots to talk about in terms of earnings too. The SGX Nifty 4 now is indicating a green start. So on that optimistic note, let's kickstart the show and tell you what you'll get to see. On the equities front, we have Sanjeev Prasad of Kotak Institutional Equities who says Indian market's risk-reward balance is unfavorable at current levels given the market's rich valuations. He says almost all sectors and stocks have re-rated meaningfully on low bond yields and positive short and medium term narratives. He adds the yield gap is at high levels in the historical context. He does not see meaningful risk to the market from earnings downgrades despite our expectations of strong earnings growth over FY21-24. to But he sees headwinds from high domestic inflation once a favourable base effect recedes and higher bond yields kick in. In their model portfolio, they have increased the weight on l and by 110 basis points to 400 basis points and reduced the same from ICICI Bank. Also increased the weight on Power Grid and cut the weight on Cipla, Lupin and Reliance Industries. Okay, several interesting changes there in the court of portfolio. Let's move to the uh, rupee call. And uh, here's a view coming in from Pramit Brambhat of Veracity who says the rupee will continue to trade in a range ahead of the Diwali holidays and the Fed meet. He's expecting the spot USD INR pair to be in a band of 74.80 to 75.20. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go across to Nigel then for the world view. Yet another all-time highs for the US markets. They ended at fresh highs. All the three frontliners, they ended well in the green. Well, as the street debates for what the Fed has to say, they focused on earnings and the numbers look very, very good. Whether it was Pfizer, whether it was Under Armour or even DuPont, 
All of them, in fact, reported strong numbers, and some of them went ahead and raised their guidance as well. And the street clearly liked that. And, uh, you know, more than 80% of the companies that have, have now reported, they have beat what, this, what the street was expecting. Well, uh, you had Tesla. That stock was under pressure. That was a lone underperformer. It was down 3%. On the back of reports that suggested they will be recalling some of their uh, vehicles. And also on uh, news that, uh, you know, Elon Musk had indicated that they yet to sign uh, that uh, uh, big order with the Hertz. So that was one stock that was under some pressure. Two big cues for the next few days. One is what the Fed has to say. The second factor will be the October jobs report number. And that will be tracked very, very closely because you get a sense in terms of what the Fed will do post that as well. In post-market hours, you had Bed Bath & Beyond. Well, the stock was up close to around 60%. Yeah, I'm not uh, making that up. It was up 10% in normal trading. And in post-market hours, it was up close to around 60%, one of the highest shorted stocks in the US markets. And that's because they announced a partnership with Kroger. So high amount of distribution out there. In terms of the uh, European markets, well, it was a mixed close. You had the CAC and DAX that ended well in the green, while the FTSE was a relative underperformer in trade yesterday. Other asset classes, the dollar has strengthened actually a little bit. It was at around 93.9 yesterday. That strengthened a little bit, while both the other two asset classes did see some bit of selling. Asian markets are mixed, but the SGX is indicating a positive tick. 30 points higher is what it's indicating. Back to you guys. Okay, Nigel, thanks a lot for that. Let's slip into a short break, but our entire research team will be with us in all their Diwali finery in just moments from now to help us prep for the day. Our list of top 10 stocks lined up in just a bit. Stay tuned. Well, once again, here's wishing all our viewers a very, very happy Diwali. Hope you have a prosperous year ahead. It has been a prosperous year for all the bulls so far. So let's get our entire team in uh, to wish us and to tell us how they're prepping us up for the day. So many stocks to discuss and here they are in their Diwali finery. Hi folks, happy Diwali to all of you. Uh, Anush, let me start with you. Uh, looking at large caps or mid caps today? Uh, uh, Non-index large caps uh, sort of uh, stocks, Sonia. By the way, the, the you know, Cipla's cancelled an acquisition. That was, I think, a big acquisition. If my memory serves me right, it was, uh, I think, uh, you know, 200, 300 million dollar acquisition. Uh, it's, it's been cancelled because the second tranche could not be completed. I think the first tranche happened. I think uh, uh, after top 10, perhaps Ekta can give us more details uh, once she studies this. Uh, but the stocks that I'm watching out for first is Pedilite, and I think uh, uh, Brent schooled off a bit. And, uh, you know, Pedilite really is the stock which is most sensitive, uh, have seen to, to crude. And it's corrected to, uh, I think, 20 and 50 day moving average. So that's something to keep an eye on. I think Canfin Homes is really because you know we're seeing a big real estate rally and uh, uh, Canfin Homes. Uh, it, it was one of the stocks of the last series uh, uh, before that market correction set in. Uh, and I think uh, if you see the chart of the Canfin Homes stock, it's almost a mirror image of what happened two months back after the correction. So I'm not saying that we'll have a similar rally, but you know, it l yesterday's move looked like perhaps start of something. So that's something I'll keep in, on my radar as well. Okay, all right. So those are the stocks that we'll watch out. Uh, Anush, thanks for that. Uh, the big one, Bharti Airtel, and it's definitely ringing in uh, the good cheer in the second quarter. Reema, uh, tell us more about it. Guy, good morning. Absolutely. So Bharti has dialed in a good quarter. Operationally, it's a beat in revenues as well as margin. Revenue growth has come in at 5.5% on a consolidated basis, which is higher than street expectations of 4.1%, and it's firing on all cylinders. The India Mobile, or the wireless business, has seen a revenue growth of over 6%. The Airtel Africa numbers we already knew, and they're clocked in a good quarter with a revenue growth of 4.3%. And even their broadband business is doing well. In fact, the company has seen its highest ever broadband subscriber edition this quarter, and that's driving a revenue growth of 9%. So the top line is looking very good. Even the, um, you know, contrary to what we saw in Reliance Geo, the company has managed to add India wireless uh, subscribers by by about 2.2 million, uh, which is a positive. Their 4G subscribers have gone up by 8 million on a sequential basis. Uh, and the average revenue per user, driven by the price increases that the company undertook, has risen to levels of 153 rupees versus 146. Consolidated EBITDA 2 um, is a beat at 49.5%. It's an improvement of 40 basis points. The bottom line has been boosted by an exceptional gain of 540 crore, and that is driving a beat. But operationally, strong numbers from Bharti Airtel. There is a conference call at 30 p.m. So we'll get greater granularity on the numbers then. Back to you. Okay, Reema, thanks a lot for that. Dabur also posted a good set of numbers. The execution was strong, volume growth in the domestic business at 10%. But Mangalam is here 
to give us some more highlights of this quarterly performance. Mangalam, over to you. Well, yesterday the management held a conference call and, uh, you know, the comments were rather positive. They've gained market share in 95% of their portfolio. Rural for them is growing at 12% on a base of 26%. Urban growing at 9% on a base of 18%. So unlike other FMCG companies, Dabur's actually seen a lot more resilience in rural as well. They see sustained inflation in the third quarter as well, but they are mitigating that with some price hikes. More importantly, new products, which was the company's focus over the last two years, has now reached 5% of their sales. And they are also increasing their reach. They're now reaching uh, 83,000 villages. Their target is to reach 90,000 villages. So from all uh, uh, factors, we're seeing some bit of, uh, you know, push from the company. Brokerages are positive on that. Most of them have an overweight or a buy rating with a target upwards of 700 rupees. The highest target price coming in from Morgan Stanley at 726 rupees. Okay, all right. So lofty targets over there. Thanks, Manglam, for those details. And we're staying with earnings and the post-call analysis. Ekta, morning, Sun Pharma blowout numbers, of course. Uh, what was the read-through from the call? Well, definitely positive. So I could probably expect follow-on buying in Sun Pharma today. So the global specialty sales was something that the street was tracking quite closely. Came in at $157 million versus estimates of around $155 million. So that was in line. Uh, there are six new products which have been launched in the U.S. markets. As of now, they've not received any intimation with regards to the Halol facility, but they are prepared for a U.S. FDA inspection for that particular plan. The margins, according to them, will be under pressure from a cost point of view, but they are possibly going to pass on the cost increases. Uh, capital allocation, they said that the focus is to find a business that would help in terms of return on equity and return on capital employed and grow the top line. So overall, the street seems to be quite enthused with the fact that the speciality sales were in line as well as the margins were at around 27% and the street and the company seems quite confident on that. Credit Suisse underperformed, but target price is raised. CLSA buy and target price is raised on that one as well. Okay, Ikta, thanks for that. Let's go close to Mangalam then for some more numbers. Mangalam? I have three on my radar. Anoj, we start with Trent. A good set of numbers coming in out there. The sales have actually grown 37% versus pre-pandemic Q2 uh, to FY20, that is. And uh, versus last year, the sales have actually doubled 101% growth out there. The EBITDA coming in at 210 crores and the net profit coming in at 80 crores versus an 80 crore loss the same time last year. The second one is uh, Gillette. While the revenues have grown 11% out there, you know, raw material prices have increased for them, both steel, plastic and packaging, which is why the EBITDA fell by about 6 odd percent and the net profit fell by 15% as well. And the final stock that I'm watching is Stovecraft. Good, good performance on the revenue front, 53% jump out there. The EBITDA was impacted by lower gross margins and higher employee expenses because the company is in expansion mode. And add to that, we did see a tax, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tax implication on the company, which is why the net profit fell. But the management commentary is rather strong, so expect green on that stock. All right, Mangalam, thanks a lot for that. Let's go across <coughs> to Agam now and find out some other results that he's tracking. Agam, what were the standout performers this time? Right, so I start off at eClerks, and it's been a good quarter considering they're looking at a 7.5% growth on a quarter and quarter basis for revenues. We've also seen a 250 basis points expansion in margins coming in at around 26.7%, and profit consequently grew around in nearly 10.5%. Uh, Moving on to MTA Technologies, again, on expected lines, a good set of numbers coming in with revenue growth of 25% year on year. Uh, EBITDA margins maintained at around 32.3%, with net profit rising 38%. There's also additional information. We have Gunaswara Rao joining uh, the company as CFO and he takes over from Tata Sikorsky Aerospace. The current CFO, uh, Sudipto Bhattacharya, steps down and will be appointed as financial advisor. And finally, we have PNB housing finance numbers. Well, a disappointing set considering the net, net interest income declined by 19% year on year and profit also declined by as much as 25%. All right, Agam, got that. Thank you very much. And no, we're not done with earnings just yet. Sonal, more numbers with you? Yes, three stocks on my radar today, So, we Let me start with Nusil, where it was a strong set. The com uh, company manufactures uh, rubber chemicals, so overall revenues went up by 70%. EBITDA was up 57%. Yes, there was some margin pressure, but lower than what we've seen in the peers, and profits went up by 83%. Even their sales volume was up around 17.5% on a YY basis. Prince Pipes, on the other hand, saw a big margin compression. This despite the fact that PVC prices have gone up, so they could have seen some inventory gains, but that has 
hasn't happened. So revenues went up by 66%, but margins took a hit of 400 basis points and profits also went up by 65%. Minda Corp, decent set of numbers. Revenues went up by 11.5%. EBITDA margin at 10.6% versus 10.1% on a YY basis. Profits also went up by 50%. And company says that they continue to implement several cost control measures for fixed costs. That could improve margins. So that stock remains in focus as well. Okay, lots of stocks in focus. Let's uh, go across to Abhishek now. He's also tracking some stocks for us. Abhishek, hi, good morning. What do you have? Good morning, Sonia. So to begin with, you know, Mahindra and Mahindra Finance have given their October disbursals, which were at 2,650 crores, up about 20% on a YY basis. Collection efficiency has come down on a month-on-month -month basis. It was at 91% compared to 100% in September. However, in October uh, 2020, it was at 89%. Uh, Spandana Spurti is the other company wherein the founder and MD, Ms. Padmaja, has resigned. So there will be a leadership change over there, which will be announced very soon. Uh, Poonawala Fincop is the other company on my radar. They will divest their stake in Magma HDI General Insurance, uh, which is a joint venture of the company. So transaction will lead to a pre-tax profit of about uh, 352 crores uh, for Poonawala Fincop, and that will help their overall uh, tier 1 ratio improve to 56.1% when compared to 52.2% that they reported last time. Back to you. Okay, got that, Abhishek. Thanks very much. And let's look at some more stocks in news. Rima, what's on your list? <clears throat> Hi, good morning again. So I'm watching InfoEdge and Sterlite because InfoEdge has announced that they will be investing about 41.2 crore in acquiring an education venture from uh, Sterlite Technology, which basically helps students prepare online for government jobs. Uh, Sari Gama, if you remember, last month had announced that, or the board had given an approval for a 750 crore of a QIP fundraise. So yesterday the board met, they've authorized the opening of the QIP and they've set the floor price at 4,200. And finally, uh, Tata Power, where reports suggest that the company has emerged as the highest bidder for a UP Transco with a 3,000 crore offer, and they've outbid a lot of the other rivals. But this is what reports are suggesting. CNBC TV18 has not independently verified it. Back to you. Okay, thank you, team, for helping us prep for the day. In case you missed out on any of those stocks, here's a quick recap of our top stocks in focus. Stocks with positive news flow today, of course, Bharti Airtel, Dabur, Post the Number, Sun Pharma, Trent. Stovecraft, E-Clerks, MTAR Tech, Nostil, Minda Corp, m and Financial, Pandana Spurti, Poonawala FinCorp, InfoEd, Sterlite Tech, Sare Gama and Tata Power. While stocks with negative news flow today, there's definitely Gillette, PNB Housing Finance and Prince Pipes. But let's go across now to Manisha Gupta to give us a roundup of all the action from the commodity market. Manisha, yesterday was a hectic day. The Dhantera sales uh, you know, went to beyond the pre-COVID levels as well. But what are you tracking overnight in the commodity market? Oh, well, yes. Festivities will continue, but the markets are now looking at the U.S. Fed meeting that kickstarts today. And uh, the U.S. dollar is trading at a one-year highs ahead of that. And that is putting pressure on various commodities. In addition to that, there also is an OPEC and Allies meeting on November 4th. And markets will watch out for that on their statement and the rest of the year demand and supply expectations. And with that, we have seen the crude oil prices decline. The other reason that the crude prices are declining is the rise in inventories in U.S. for a second straight week. That seems to be really weighing on. In the other industrial metals, iron ore prices are trading at a 16-month lows. Copper is trading at a two-week lows. And that pretty much is moved across metal prices. The strength in U.S. dollar, the U.S. Fed meeting in focus, there is some profit-taking and sideline trades that you're seeing happening. Back Diwali festivities galore and also earnings galore. So we'll quickly get into a you know conversation now on the earnings front. Easy Trip planners uh, posted what looked like a strong set of numbers for the second quarter. Of course, the base was fairly low. It, everything was locked down pretty much same time last year. Uh, and of course, uh, now we're looking at a pan India recovery. So what's the course ahead looking like? That's the question to Prashant Piti, co-founder and director of EaseMyTrip.com. Prashant, thanks for joining in. Happy Diwali to you and your entire team. Uh, you know, <clears throat> so we need to understand the revenue for, uh, first. You've done 60 crores in the second quarter, which is obviously the big growth over the 22 crores last year. Uh, Manglam tells us that apparently the, the adjusted revenue is 101 crores. Can you explain that? What is this adjustment? Thank you so much for having me on the show and wishing you and the entire audience happy Diwali. Our revenue from operations is somewhere around 60 crores. The adjusted revenue is basically the discounts which we give to the customers plus the claims return back. We consider all of them to be 
basically our revenue. See, the discounts which we give to the customers is our prerogative. So that is why it's the industry practice that we all, you know, calculate adjusted revenue and the adjusted revenue actually uh, is around 101 crores for this particular quarter. Given, that's not money in your hand. That's a discount given, right? So I guess optically it's better to look at the, uh, you know, that, that figure of 60 crores, no? So the way uh, this adjusted revenue basically means the kind of money, this the gross margins this company has earned. Mm. And then the discounts which we have been given to the consumers. That is what we mean by adjusted revenue. Okay, got that. It's, it's the industry practice of our competitors also yeah. uh, calculate the adjusted revenue in the same way. So, I, I guess what Sridhi is trying to say is, you know, logically it doesn't make sense, but I get it. A lot of your platforms do that. Uh, you all do calculate right. the, the revenues and the gross margins like that. But uh, I want to also talk a little bit about the bookings because the in the first half of the year, the bookings have gone up significantly. Air bookings are at almost 26 lakhs versus uh, about 9 lakhs same time last year. Is it just that a reflection correct. of pent-up demand or do you think that this is a sustainable run rate that you can see in the second half of the year as well? See, uh, our company is a growing company. We have been growing at a pace of 47% year on year prior to the COVID. From FI 17 till FI 20, we were growing 47% year on year, right? Mm -hmm. So, what the way we are seeing is that we are we are actually gaining market share as we speak, and because of which uh, the the bookings which you have mentioned has grown tremendously. Also, there is a pent up demand. Also, there's a bounce back. Also, there's a revenge travel, and we believe that the second uh, second half of the year uh, for the entire tourism industry would be actually much much better than the first half because the first half was encapsulated in the second wave of COVID. So can you give us some numbers? I mean, what do you think the second half of the year can look like? Uh, by the end of, say, FY21, you sat on about um, 140 crores of revenues. In the first mm -hmm. half of the year, your revenues are a little over 95 crores. By the end of the second half, where do you see your revenues and what do full year revenues look like? See, to be honest, it would be extremely hard for us to predict. I mean, Hopefully, they will. We will not go through the third wave of COVID, and if, even if it happens, it happens at a very subdued level. Uh, the anticipation in that is what what is going to happen, thanks to the vaccination drive this country is also seeing. Uh, but again, it's going to be extremely hard to predict. We want to we want to do better, much much better than the last year, and that is what our expectation is. Given how our first half of the year compared to the first half of the last year is performing, we are uh, we are looking for a great year. Mm. On the margin front, uh, Prashant, now Q2, you are at uh, over 61%. Uh, but I'm just trying to understand, understand, X of COVID, what would be a normalized margin trajectory for you? And in, tied in with that question is the question on discounting. I mean, uh, what's the industry trend now? Will discounts peter down if travel remains the way it is? And what's your margin profile going to be like? See, the discounting actually went up this particular half of the year. Uh, if you see the discount uh, was somewhere around 2%, but for this particular half of the year, it is somewhere around 4.9%. And that is primarily because, you know, uh, from the airlines, from the hotels, we are getting some cashbacks, which we are passing uh, to the consumers. <clears throat> and that is also kind of an industry practice. Uh, uh, we believe that the discountings will ease off uh, in, the, in the second half, and because of which the margins could even look better. Okay, Prashant, we'll leave it there today. Thanks a lot for, for joining us. Uh, uh, season's greetings. Uh, Devin Choksi is now joining us from KR Choksi Securities. Uh, Devin, good morning. Uh, happy Diwali to you and your team. Uh, uh, are you bullish or uh, slightly nervous on the market? Uh, do you think the correction that we had is showing signs of ending? Hi, Anuj. Good morning. Happy Diwali to you, Paul, and all your viewers as well. Well, I think as the market uh, currently behaves, individual stocks have uh, basically corrected in some of the cases. I think a sharper correction about 10 degrees, 10% uh, or 15% also has happened. And uh, in my viewpoint, I think this kind of sharper correction would invite the buying support, buying interest at the lower levels. So this market, as I see it, uh, is likely to be offering the opportunity at lower levels in individual stocks more than overall indices. Uh, in, in my viewpoint, I think some of the stronger companies where the fundamental remain strong, be it in the IT space, be it in the uh, retail banking space or be it in NBFC space, I would think that the businesses are remaining quite robust for them. And any correction of a sharper degree would invite buying interest into them. So certainly it is going to be more of a stock-specific market vis-a-vis -vis the index direction that we are talking about. 
uh, one would like to look at individual companies uh, from a fundamental perspective. Quite possible that within the bunch of uh, uh, stocks and within the industry itself, we might find some of the companies behaving quite differently as far as their business performance is concerned. And that is where all the eyes would be. So selection of individual stocks would be the uh, way of working as far as the market opportunity goes going forward. Uh, Devin, I wanted your thoughts on Bharti because yes, agreed, the numbers are good, the Beat Street estimates, but the stock has also gone up from 500 to 700 plus in the last six months, right? Uh, do you think it's priced in a lot of the good news? Hi, Sonia, good morning. Uh, well, obviously, uh, there is one expectation out here that the ARPU is uh, increasing. And going by what Reliance is doing with the Geo new phone that they have launched, it appears that I think ARPU is going to be on a higher side for the telcos. Uh, another important point which is likely to emerge stronger, and that could probably happen over the next few quarters, I believe. Uh, once they start launching the applications related to 5G, uh, there is going to be an increased amount of usage of data. And that is where you are likely to see the better and better ARPU coming in. I think because of these reasons, most of the telecom companies are inviting a different attention of analysts now. And as a result of which, I think expectation is that ARPUs would start increasing eventually. Uh, and that is the reason for which the stock prices have improved. I do agree that I think they're slightly factored uh, in this event and probably I think moved ahead of time. But as I see it, I think the perception remains quite strong about increasing the ARPU. And that's the reason for which you are likely to see maybe a stronger price uh, for companies like Bharti, even I think for Reliance Geo as well. Mm, okay. Devin, uh, good morning and season's greetings to you. Looking bright and festive in the yellow over there. Uh, so, you know, since we're talking earnings, I want to ask you a broader question. Obviously, uh, margin pressure is a reality across the board, across sectors this season, right? So, any examples, one or two companies that have stood out for you, which have been able to mitigate margin pressure the best? You know, winners from that standpoint, because then you know you're backing a business and a management that can uh, withstand a pressure in the down cycle as well. Yeah, so be good morning and uh, Diwali greetings to you as well. Uh, well, I think uh, immediately uh, if one has to look at the Sun Pharma's result, in Sun Pharma's result, uh, probably I think they have been able to beat the margin. They have been able to beat the cost uh, pressure and probably I think have been able to record relatively better performance on the margin side. But this could be one of, as I see it, I think as you progress forward in subsequent quarters, we are likely to see the high cost of raw material affecting, and at the same time, I think other expenses, which are largely driven by the logistic related costs, which also going to affect uh, many of the companies. In fact, I would like to think that many of the companies, in chemical companies particularly, where the input costs have significantly gone up. And going forward in coming quarters, we are likely to see uh, the pressure continuing. Most of the companies with whom we are interacting, I think they are saying very clearly that I think this kind of cost pressure is unprecedented. I think they have never seen it. They would probably try to pass it on as much as possible, but I think unable to do so completely. So that is one area which I think we are watchful about. Even in auto, auto ancillary space also, though in some of the pockets we are seeing relatively better kind of a ability to pass on the cost. But it is not completely guaranteed whether in subsequent quarters too it will be passed it over. So in my viewpoint, I think the commodity-related pressure will continue for next couple of quarters till the time I think we see the stability. I think demand scenario remains fortunately very, very strong in most of the businesses. So that is where I think the companies would be able to pick up on volumes, though they may have some amount of beat on the margins. What about uh, a stock like Dabur, uh, uh, Devin? Because, you know, last quarter, of course, uh, the earnings were good, but there was this uh, whole issue that perhaps it was because of immunity products. But this quarter's numbers, again, looking quite good. Uh, are, are you sort of buying this stock here or you think it's too expensive? I think the uh, uh, important aspect, Anuj, about Dabur would be that the portfolio of products, I think, is changing and changing, I think, for the nutrition-based products, I think, are basically getting more prominence and that's where they are also getting relatively higher margin. So this is one change factor which is happening in their strategy as far as the implementation of the business plan is concerned. Going forward, the contribution from this side of the activity could remain relatively higher, and so it could support the margin and the relatively, relatively, I think, better margins going forward. But again, I'm maintaining the viewpoint that most of these FMCG companies too would have the challenge of passing over the complete cost to the end customer. 
they would probably have a situation where in, in product portfolios, depending on I think the demand side, I think they would have some amount of margin to be uh, compromised when the cost I think would be on a higher side. Okay. Let's see. I think uh, demand scenario remains strong. That is my conviction. But I think the cost part, I'm a little bit more skeptical now. Okay. Uh, so since you said demand scenario is strong, I'm going to pick another company where the demand has been very strong this time around. Looks like people are definitely buying more appliances and redoing their houses, buying more pressure cookers perhaps. Stovecraft posted a good set of numbers on the revenue front. So the revenues are very strong. 53% growth year on year coming in at 363 odd crores. Uh, the problem really came through in the margins. Margins are under pressure as always because of higher raw material costs and they had higher employee costs as well. Rajendra Gandhi, who is the MD of Stovecraft, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Gandhi, good morning uh, and happy Diwali to you. Hope you have a great year ahead, much better than the previous one. Uh, tell us a little bit about demand trends because, you know, during the COVID period, people were, of course, upgrading their homes, buying, um, you know, better appliances, more appliances perhaps. But now that uh, things have opened up, what kind of normalized demand do you see? And which are the pockets where you see the most amount of traction? Uh, good morning and happy Diwali to you and all the viewers. Uh, on the demand side, I would want to continue to say that uh, it is change of habits which is continued to helping our business. Uh, and further, there were uh, times when all the channels were not able to perform, but now these are getting back to normal times. So we are witnessing uh, good growth in all the channels, whether it is the large format stores or the, of course, e-commerce was dominating and uh, the general trade is also responding uh, equally mm -hmm. or i can say it has got it has got back to the growth overall uh, we are witnessing uh, very good demand i think uh, overall the sector itself is doing well maybe some of uh, the business is moving from the unorganized to the organized players but uh, as consumption itself is growing up and uh, the economic uh, 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 capability of the consumer moving upwards i think uh, the demand continues to grow Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Gandhi, uh, season's greetings to you. Happy Diwali. Can you break this up in terms of, uh, you know, demand trends, in terms of product categories? Where are they strongest? Is there a geographical sort of tilt to it? And also, I'm guessing you've already been taking some price hikes because of the raw material inflation. So how is that being digested in the market? We took a price correction in the month of April, and I think we missed out the price hike in the second quarter. So uh, we have again taken a price hike uh, in this quarter. And uh, so, so is there an impact in the margins in our second quarter? Uh, but on the demand side or the growth side for all the categories that we are in, we are seeing uh, almost equal uh, uh, demand in the cookware, that is the pressure cooker, cook, uh, non-stick cookware category, or the cooktop, induction cooktop. Of course, I think uh, we have grown uh, tremendously uh, getting to leadership there. And there are some appliances which were not very large in the past, have become uh, uh, very big for us. And also we have got to leadership some uh, products like kettles. I can only say that uh, in all the categories of business that we are there, including our LED, we are growing almost at the same uh, same level. And uh, for the first half, we grew, uh, the revenue grew up by uh, close to 75%. Of course, uh, there, there was a little, uh, not necessarily a comparable uh, first half over the last year. But then uh, the demand side is uh, demonstrated in the growth of our revenues. Can you help us with what the exact market share is that Stovecraft enjoys in the cookers and the cookware segment compared to say some of the other players like a Hawkins or even uh, a TTK Prestige? So I can say that uh, we are growing at a, a pace which is much higher than the industry growth uh, or the names that you mentioned. Today, we do not have a formalized uh, report which can uh, give us uh, the market share, which in due course we would wish to do. But uh, we are in the top three, definitely. Okay, on the top three. Uh, so what kind of growth rates do you think that you can eke out by the end of the year? I mean, what would your target be? We are continuing to grow and uh, we uh, continue to see a uh, very strong demand. We have continued to invest in our backward integration and our manufacturing capability, which is giving us uh, that advantage on the supply chain in spite of that huge uh, disruptive nature of the logistics currently that is there, particularly in the imports, and also the disruptive nature of uh, the current situation on uh, all input costs. We are still able to manage our uh, supply chain 
uh, and able to deliver. So with this, uh, I believe I'm the, uh, continue the impetus on, uh, um, on manufacturing. We believe we'll grow at a similar rate that we've been growing. Um, the scope for growth is way, I mean, the opportunity is uh, quite large and uh, as much as we can manage well, I think we'll continue to grow. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you very much for uh, joining in. We wish you all the best uh, for the festive season and of course beyond. Welcome back. Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar now joining us. Uh, uh, gentlemen, good morning. Sudarshan, uh, what's the nifty trade today if we have a 30-35 point sort of uptake? Uh, good morning, Anush. Yesterday, we thought markets will consolidate and they obliged us. Now, that consolidation gives us a very narrow and tight range for the Nifty. There is a significant, uh, the markets were moving between approximately 17,960 and 17,860, 100 point range. So, a break from this range on the upside or the downside will give us a trade. Inside this 100 point range, you know, markets will be random. But I would expect if the Nifty slowly clears 17,960, then I would go long with a very tight 50-point stop. And if it just moves inside and starts going down, since I don't go short, I will do nothing. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, Sudarshan's view. Since he doesn't want to short, he won't buy and uh, so no nifty trade. Mitesh, good morning. Uh, is there a nifty trade or a bank nifty trade for you? Morning, Anuj. Yesterday, you know, I was talking about the fact that around 18,000, 18,050, you will see supply, and I think we kind of tapered off from uh, that zone. And on the downside, 17,800 is your support pivot. So I think market will chop around within this range. So at any point during the time, if we are getting closer to 18,000, uh, 17,800, uh, I would be a buyer with targets of around 18,000, 18,050, and take a 50 point kind of a stop. Okay, buyer with a 50 point stop. Uh, Mitesh, what about individual stocks? So what are you buying and selling? Uh, on the stock side, you know, I have uh, a buy on Bata with a stop at 2020 for targets of 2095. DLF is a buy with a stop at 422 half for targets of 450. Also a buy on a couple of banking names, union name, uh, banking names, Union Bank and uh, Federal Bank are the buy uh, calls. Union Bank is a buy with a stop below 4780 for targets of 53 and Federal Bank is a buy with a stop at 100 for targets of 106. Okay, and... Uh uh, Sudarshan, uh, what's on your stock uh, stock list today? Well, Siemens is a buy. You know, the stock has been consolidating since August. The many stocks have been doing that. August, September, October, all of October. And it's now showing signs of mo moving up. Momentum has turned up. It hasn't gone through a deep correction. So it's not, an, not necessarily an intraday buy, but it's worth buying and holding for some time. Keep a stop under 21.90. The second buy is Tata Consumers. It had a sharp correction. That correction seems to be getting over, and slowly it will get its act together. I think that is another opportunity to go long, not for just one day, for a longer period of time, with a stop under 806. I also have a third stock, which is an intraday short, and that's uh, done with a lot of courage. That's Tata Motors. You know, after that big rally, for the last 10 days, Tata Motors has been moving with sort of very wide ranges. Now, wide ranges in my dictionary are almost always bearish. So, wait, uh, keep a stop which is about the high of the first one hour and then consider going short in it. We'll keep it intraday. Okay, got that. That's some sane advice coming through from Sudarshan and Mitesh. But let's get you some FNO cues as well. Chandan Taparia, Derivatives and Technical Analyst at Motilal Oswal Financial Services is joining in. Chandan, good morning and happy Diwali to you and your entire team at Motilal Oswal. Um, how are you approaching trade today and what are the stocks that one can look at perhaps? Uh, good morning, Sonia. Wishing you happy Diwali to you and entire family at CNBC at TV18 and all the viewers. So talking about the market, uh, we have seen Nifty remain consolidative but Bank Nifty outperform. And good part is that stock projection is clearly visible in the market. So we will focus on the consumptions, open up theme or QSR segment. We believe that there good buying interest could continue. Uh, talking about the Nifty till it holds about 17,777, we will use any small decline as a buying opportunity. So talking about the trading ideas, first it will be buy on ABFRL. Aditya Birla face and the stock has really rallied well on the last trading session. And I... It's okay. There seems to be some issue with your uh, video. So we'll do one thing. We'll come back to you, Chandan, in a bit. Thanks a lot for your calls. We'll, of course, fla keep flashing them on the screen. Let's take a short break. We have a little under 10 minutes to go before the pre-opening rates kick in. We will also have Tarun Lakhotia, the Director, Kotak Institutional Equities, to discuss.